Hey guys, Tony Maritato here, licensed physical therapist, and I wanted to answer a question coming in from the Total Knee Replacement Support Group from Cut for Kind People on Facebook. So this is from a group member where she was asking me about basically building back the muscle that she's lost following the initial injury. To give you guys context, I want to read a little bit of it, and then I'll reply here in just a minute. So she was saying that she had fractured her tibial plateau. The tibia is the shin bone, so the top of the tibia, kind of the bottom of the knee. She had fractured her tibial plateau due to a biking injury. Um, she was up to uh, walking three and a half miles a day. She was biking 30 miles when it happened. She was working out with a trainer three days a week. She was very strong prior to the injury. Following the injury, subsequent to the injury, she was not using the leg for a good 12 weeks. She was in a wheelchair during that time. She's now able to walk. So the injury happened um, last year, or this year, I guess. She's planning the knee replacement January 2022. So the knee replacement's about a month, month and a half maybe off. Um, 12 weeks in the wheelchair, I already said that. She's walking now pretty much without a cane, but she used, still uses the cane for stability. She still, she has uh, some osteoarthritis going on in the other knee. So that's still kind of an issue and that knee might get replaced sometime next year as well. She's asking how long will it take to regain the muscle mass I've lost? So the first question is, about muscle mass. Now there's a difference between muscle mass and muscle strength. There's a difference between the aesthetic, the visual, the way the, the muscle looks versus the way it performs, the function. I'm gonna tell you, I believe the function will come back much sooner, much easier than the actual aesthetics of the leg. The size, the mass of the muscle, I think that will probably take the longest to return. But let me read through the rest of it. So she was saying that she'd like to regain the muscle mass. She lost a lot of it. Um, right now, the injured leg is two inches smaller than the non-injured leg. It's noticeable when she wears certain types of clothes. And if she stares at it too long, it can be discouraging. Needless to say, she needs to kind of get out of her head on those days. So let's talk about that for a second, because this isn't an unusual situation. I see a lot of people, unfortunately, who have had multiple fractures of the tibia, the femur, and so I'm well familiar with your case. The first thing is understanding the difference between the aesthetics and the function. So muscle in general, we can train muscle for size, that would be considered hypertrophy, and we can train muscle for function, which might be strength or power. So I think if you set your goals on function, function is more easily measured. Function is something that you can always improve, can always get better. Obviously it could always get worse for people who don't do anything, but that's not in your nature. That's not the personality of you. So I'm not worried about that. When we're looking at performance improvement, you could literally gain performance on a week to week basis. Like every week you could do a little bit more. You can you didn't want to ride your bike again. I don't know the, the details of the injury, but whatever you do want to get back to, whether it's lifting at the gym with a trainer, whether it's walking, whatever, you can do that as soon as you get out of surgery. I mean, it really is one of those things that I like to measure improvement on a weekly basis. I think day to day, there's going to be good days and bad days. Day to day is just too short of a time frame. But on a weekly basis, you should generally find that you're able to perform more things, you're able to get better range of motion, you're able to improve um, what you can do physically, your endurance, your tolerance, your strength production, power production, force production, all of those things can improve week to week. Understanding that there's gonna be plateaus and there's gonna be setbacks, but over a period of time, there'll be steady progress. The aesthetics is, actually matching the girth of your injured leg to your non-injured leg. And that is absolutely more challenging. You know, I remember years ago, decades ago, there was research out that basically suggested in your 20s and 30s, you could improve like muscle hypertrophy in six to 12 weeks. 
after your 30s into your 40s and 50s, it could take as long as six months. I'm going to tell you that as a 46 year old myself working out multiple days a week, sometimes five days a week, sometimes less, it seems like I can work out as much as I, I my body can handle and I won't see hypertrophy changes ever. Like we're talking weeks and months and years at a time. I don't see hypertrophy changes. I believe I don't necessarily have the physiology that would allow my body to change to, for muscles to get larger the way they would have in my 20s. But I do see performance gains, you know, whereas I could lift a certain amount of weight as a one rep max and then I work on that, I can improve that one rep max, I can increase my strength gains and my power gains. But for me, I don't see the hypertrophy changes. And I would say you being a female with less testosterone, you're probably even less likely to see hypertrophy changes. But all of that being said, in my experience, while maybe the one leg will always be a little bit smaller and the other leg may be a little bit bigger, I do find that with training and with time, there is a normalization of the two sides, whether the, the non-fractured side tends to thin out or the fractured side tends to thicken up. I'm not sure. I don't know where your gains are going to come from, but I will say that it will normalize to some level. You may never be exactly the same, but nobody's exactly the same. Everybody has asymmetries. And so if you want to nail me down to a specific time frame, I would probably say you're talking more in the range of nine to 12 months to really see things normalize. Um, initially, you'll probably see some symmetry just because of the swelling right? You have a knee replacement on one side, there's going to be swelling, the thigh, the calf. And then even once that's kind of resolved, maybe by the 12 week mark and working into, you know, 26 weeks, I think what you're going to find is that when you work out, <clears throat> potentially because that side with the history of the fracture and the weakness is going to be working just a little bit harder than the other side, it's probably gonna be a little more inflamed during the recovery process. It's gonna be a little more swollen. So again, you might see a more normalized girth measurement. So visually it might look kind of pleasing, but that's mostly because it was a weaker muscle. It's gotten more sore after a workout. It's more swollen, it's more tender. Um, so, you know, Take it for what it is. You've got the visual aspect that might be in line with what you're looking for. But the reality is you're not going to see physiologic muscular changes, especially hypertrophy, probably um, within nine months, closer to 12 months. And, you know, my main goal for you is you have the right attitude based on everything that you've written in this comment, in this post, like what makes me so fired up and excited to hear your story and hopefully hear updates to your story if you're willing to share is the fact that you have the right outlook, which is I cannot wait to get back in the gym. I cannot wait to get back to doing the things that I love. That's why I'm having this surgery because I want a better quality of life. I want to do things that I can't do right now. And so I commend you for that. I wish you the best. And I don't know if I answered your question exactly, but thank you so much for taking the time to post it. I'll catch you guys on the next question and answer.